Welcome everybody to another Voice of Nick show. We're doing more of our Post to America audiobook editing. And uh, <clears throat> I moved on to <coughs> to uh, a totally different chapter. Last time we were on book six, I think. Now we're on book 10. Um, but I did skip over a couple. Book seven is not recorded yet. That's the last one I have to record. Book eight, I did not edit fully. Um, but I did finish book six finish book eight, or book nine rather, finish book six, finish book nine, and then uh, did a little bit of book 10. So we have this much done so far of book 10. And this is the chapter uh, called, How Paris Was Stricken to Death and in Vain Sought Help of Enoni. So uh, it's where Paris is killed. And we'll see how that happens as we go. Here you go. If thou draw a little nigher, lo, the stream is fringed as though with ice, or white stone rims it round. Rushed on Alcesis Medjis, Phileus' son, and drave his spear beneath his fluttering heart. Loosed were the cords of sweet life suddenly, and his sad... I love when they do this metaphor. Um, they describe it as, loosed were the cords of sweet life which is to say that he killed him. <laughs> and drave his spear beneath his fluttering heart. Loosed were the cords of sweet life suddenly, and his sad parents longed in vain to greet that son returning from the woeful war. And his sad parents longed in vain to greet that son returning from the woeful war to Margassus and Phileus' lovely girt. To Margassus, that son returned to Margassus and Phileus' lovely girt from the woeful war to Margassus and Phileus' lovely girt. 
dwellers by the woeful war, to Margassus and Phelus lovely girt, dwellers by lucent streams of Harpasus, who pours the full blood of, of Harpasus, lucent streams of Harpasus, who pours the full blood of Harpasus, who pours the full blood of his clamorous flow into meander, madly rushing I, who pours the full who pours the full blood of his clamorous dwellers by lucent streams of Harpasus, who pours the full blood of his clamorous flow into meander, madly rushing I, who pours the full blood of his clamorous flow into meander, madly rushing I. With Glaucus, who pours the full blood of his clamorous flow into meander, madly rushing I. I see what I was trying to do, because it's the end of a section, so I usually try to give it a little more weight. Pours the full. This is a great sequence. This is what um, Homer and Quintus are both really good at, is like, uh, whenever there's like a cool kill it'll make you feel bad that you think it's cool um so this is where like he uh somebody gets killed yeah uh Meggie's kills a guy drives the spear right beneath his heart loosed and it says loosed were the cords of life suddenly and his sad parents longed in vain to greet that son returning from the woeful war and then it tells all about where his hometown was, where he used to live. So it's saying like, uh, you know, he killed this guy, but then also uh, his parents will never see him again and his hometown will never see him return. And that's really powerful to, to have those two things instantly juxtaposed. Lo, the stream is fringed as though with ice, for white stone rims it round. Rushed on Alcesis Medjis, Phileus' son, and drave his spear beneath his fluttering heart. Loosed were the cords of sweet life suddenly, and his sad parents longed in vain to greet that son returning from the woeful war. To Margassus and Phelus lovely girt, dwellers by lucent streams of Harpasus, who pours the full blood of his clamorous flow into meander, madly rushing eye. blood of his clamorous flow into meander madly rushing eye with glaucus with glaucus madly rushing eye with glaucus warrior comrades madly rushing eye with Glaucus' warrior comrade Skylassius, Odius' son closed in the fight, and stabbed over the shield rim, and the cruel spear passed through his shoulder. Fight, and stabbed over the shield rim, and the cruel spear passed through his shoulder, and drenched his shield with blood. Howbeit he passed through his shoulder, and drenched his shield with blood. Howbeit he slew him not, whose day of doom awaited him afar beside the wall of his own city, whose day of doom awaited him afar beside the wall of his own city. No, that can't be right. For when Ilium's town awaited him afar, comma, beside the wall of his own city. Right? Yeah. Wall of his own city. The punctuation in a lot of these ancient texts is really strange, so you kind of have to come up with your own pronunciation and cadence um, because it doesn't really match the way it would be written now whose day of doom awaited him afar beside the wall of his own city for when Ilium's towers were brought low by that swift avenging host fleeing the war to Lycia then he came alone and when he drew nigh to the town the thronging women met and questioned him touching their sons and husbands and he told how all were and he told how all were dead. And so this just casually mentions in the middle of the story, one of many times when it casually mentions in the middle of the story, oh yeah, by the way, when Troy is destroyed, this guy goes and does this. And it's like, whoa, Troy hasn't been destroyed yet. <laughs> you know, it's like, uh, 
these a, a lot of these ancient stories do that where it's like they kind of assume that you know what's going to happen um i like to think that they're putting you in sort of a omniscient perspective like as if you were one of the gods and you kind of like you see everything at once um it's really an interesting way to tell a story host fleeing the war to lisha then he came alone and when he drew nigh to the town the thronging women met and questioned him touching their sons and husbands and he told how a lot of it also obviously is that when the greeks were telling these stories these epic poems everybody hearing knew the story so it's like they you know didn't have to keep it a secret it's not like a novel now but i like to think of it the other way where it's like um you the reader are like in an omniscient seat and when he drew nigh to the town the thronging women met and questioned him touching their sons and husbands and he told how all were dead they compassed him about and stoned the man with great stones that he died so had he no joy of his winning home so stones that he died so had he no joy of his winning home but the stones muffled up his dying groans and of that sick and of the sa and of the same his his dying groans and of the same his gas up his dying groans and of the same his ghastly tomb was dying groans and of the same his ghastly tomb was reared beside Bellerophon's grave and holy place in beside Bellerophon's grave and holy place in close ghastly tomb was reared beside Bellerophon's grave and holy place in close nigh that far famed Chimera's crag yet though he thus fulfilled his day of doom as a god after so this guy basically uh he comes home from the war only to be executed for telling all the women and children that they lost the war though he yet though he thus fulfilled his day of doom as far famed chimera's crag yet though he thus fulfilled his place in close nigh that far famed chimera's crag Yet, though he thus fulfilled his day of doom, as a god afterward men worshipped him by Phoebus Hest. As a god afterward men worshipped him. That's better. Fulfilled his day of doom, as a god after. There's another instance of where they're just telling something that happens after the events of the story, during the story. So it really is. I I always describe it as like Doctor Manhattan, where it's just like he knows everything that's happening all at once. It's like Slaughterhouse Five or something. Yet, though he thus fulfilled his day of doom, as a god afterward, men worshipped him by Phoebus Hest, and never his honor fades, and never his honor fades, and never his honor fades. Now Pia's son the white. Now Pia's son the while slew. Now P.S. on the wild slew D. Now P.S. on the wild. His honor fades. It's tough doing these like batch volume raises because you don't want to um, blow out any of the sound. But you also don't want to have to do like an individual little section every single time because that would take forever so you have to try and find like a general like oh all this whole section is generally needing to be raised men worshipped him by phoebus hest and never his honor fades now ps on the while slew dionius and Achimus, and tenor's warrior son yea a great host of Dionius and Achimus, and Tenor's warrior son. Yea, a great host of strong men. So Pia's son is Philoctetes, which is the guy that they just brought into the war. We did a piece of art, a few pieces of art featuring him. He's like the archer guy who they find in the cave. Now Pia's son the while slew Dionius and Achimus, and Tenor's warrior son. Yea, a great host of strong men he laid. Yea, a on. Yea, a great host of strong men laid he low. Yea, a great host of strong men laid he low. 
Uh. Yea, a great host of strong men laid he low. Yea, a great host of strong men laid he low. First one's better. Tenor's warrior son. Yea, a great host of slew Dionius and Achimus, and Tenor's warrior son. Yea, a great host of strong men laid he low. On like the war god through his foot. On like the war god. I always forget to drink water, and then when I do drink it, I have to drink like half of a bottle. Or your hydrated. Yea, a great host of strong men laid he low. On like your son. Yea, a great host of strong men laid he low. On, like the war god, through his foes he rushed, or as a river. On, like the war god, through his foes he rushed, or as a river roaring in full flood. On, like the war god, through his foes he rushed. Like the war god, through his foes he rushed. Uh, second one, I guess. Sometimes they're like equally good options, but you just have to choose one. And laid he low. On, like the war god, through his foes he strong men laid he low. On, like the war god, through his foes he rushed. Or as a river roars he rushed. Or as a river roaring in full flood breaks down long dikes, when maddening round its rocks, down from the mountains swelled by rain, it pours an ever flowing, mightily rushing stream, whose flow mightily rushing stream mightily rushing stream whose foam ever flowing mightily rushing stream whose foaming crest rushing stream whose foaming crests over its foreland sweep so going mightily rushing stream whose foaming crests over its foreland mightily rushing stream whose foaming crests over its foreland sweep so none who saw him e crests over its foreland sweep so none who saw him ever flowing mightily rushing stream whose foaming crests over its foreland sweep so none who saw him even from afar dared meet renowned pious valiant son whose breast with battle fury was fulfilled whose limbs were clad in mighty hercules arms whose limbs were clad in mighty hercules arms of cunning workmanship for on the whose breast with battle fury was fulfilled, whose limbs were clad in mighty Hercules' arms of cunning workmanship. For on the belt gleamed bears most grim and savage, jackals fell, and panthers, in whose eyes there seems to lurk a deadly smile. In whose eyes there seem, in whose eyes there seems to lurk a deadly smile. A deadly smile. There lurk a deadly smile. There were fierce-hearted seems to lurk a deadly smile. There were fierce-hearted wolves and boars with flashing tusks and mighty panthers in whose eyes there seems to lurk a deadly smile. There were fierce-hearted wolves and boars with flashing tusks and mighty lions all seeming strangely alive and mighty lions all seeming lions all and mighty lions li 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 see if this works. Probably not. And mighty lions. Yeah, it doesn't work. And mighty li and mighty lion. I guess this flashing tusks and mighty lions. All boars with flashing tusks and mighty lions. All seeming strangely alive. And they're portrayed through all its breath. And they're portrayed through all strangely alive. And they're portrayed through Seeming strangely alive, and there portrayed through all its breadth were battles murder rife, with, and there portrayed with, and there portrayed through all its breadth were battles murder rife, all its breadth were battles murder rife, and there portrayed through all its breadth were battles murder rife, with, and there murder rife. So this is like um, a section where instead of describing the battle itself. Now we're just talking about the armor that Philoctetes is wearing, which has a bunch of artwork on it. This is now describing the artwork. All seeming strangely alive, and there portrayed through all 
deeply alive. And there portrayed through all its breadth were battles murder rife. With all these marvels covered was the belt. Its breadth were battles murder rife. With all these marvels covered was the belt. And with yet more the quiver was adorned. Its marvels covered was the belt. And with yet more the quiver was adorned. And, y and with yet more the quiver was adorned. There Hermes, all these marvels covered was the belt, and with yet more the quiver was adorned. There Hermes was, storm-footed son of Zeus, slaying huge Argus nigh to Enochus streams. Slaying huge Argus, slaying huge Argus nigh to Enochus streams. Huge Argus nigh to, slaying huge Argus nigh, slaying huge Argus nigh to Enochus. Slaying, slaying huge Argus, slaying huge Argus. Slaying huge Argus night. Slaying huge Argus night. I like the first part of this. Let's see if we can cut in the second part. Slaying huge Argus night. Night to eat. We should be able to. Son of Zeus. Slaying huge Argus night to Enochus streams. There you go. Argus, who sentinel eyes in. Yeah, Hermes, uh. In the most recent translation of the Odyssey that I was reading. Uh, he a lot of times he's called the Argus Slayer, and I never really read about that story. But I guess Hermes killed this guy. He Zeus like sent him to kill this like many-eyed creature named Argus. I guess we're gonna hear about him now. Trade through all its breadth were battles murder rife. With all these marvels covered was the belt, and with yet more the quiver was adorned. There Hermes was, storm-footed son of Zeus, slaying huge Argus nigh to Enochus streams. Argus, whose sentinel eyes in turn, Argus, whose sentinel eyes in turn took nigh to Enochus streams. Argus, whose sentinel eyes in turn took sleep. And there was Phaethon. Yeah, it's funny, like, there's so many characters and things going on in a lot of these stories that you can read through it and not really... Um, you know, like latch on to one of them. Like, I don't think I remember really knowing about who Argus was when I narrated this part. But then when I was reading that Odyssey translation, I was like, wow, I'm interested to know about Argus. And now when I'm going back and editing it, I realized I had already narrated a part about him. And I'm only right now just realizing it. Storm-footed son of Zeus, slaying huge Argus nigh to Enochus streams. Argus, whose sentinel eyes in turn took sleep. And there was Phaethon, from the sun car hurled into Eridanus. From the sun car hurled into Eridanus. Eridanus. Phaethon was like, uh, I forget his whole story, but he basically like begged to drive the car of the sun, the chariot of the sun around, and he couldn't control it, and he almost caused the earth to get set on fire, so Zeus uh, shot him with a bolt of lightning and killed him. Uh, it's a pretty... It's sort of like a, um, like a uh, Icarus type of story there, where he thought he could control like powers that were more powerful than he was. Argus, whose sentinel eyes in turn took sleep, and there was Phaethon from the sun car hurled into Eridanus. Earth verily seemed to blaze, and black smoke hovered on the air. There Perseus slew Medusa, gorgon-eyed. There Perseus slew Medusa, gorgon-eyed. By the stars. I think everybody knows the story of Medusa. And black smoke. Although you might not know that Medusa, I guess when like the head of Medusa fell off or or something, or one of the Gorgon's heads like was chopped off, and then out of that head was born uh, whatever that horse is that everybody, uh, the one that Hercules rides in the cartoon. It is named. P, P something. Pegasus. Pegasus was born out of the he the chopped off head of a gorgon. Into Eridanus. Interesting little <laughs> uh, backstory. To That's not really depicted very often. Into Eridanus. Earth verily seemed to blaze, and black smoke hovered on the air. There Perseus slew Medusa, gorgon-eyed, by the stars' baths and utmost bounds of earth and fountains of deep flowing ocean, 
where night in the far west meets the setting sun. There was the titan... Where night in the far west meets the setting sun. There was the titan Eopatus, great sun, hung from the beetling crag of Caucasus. And this is Prometheus again. We already heard a part about Prometheus. Uh, I think it was on Eurypolis' shield, showing Hercules saving Prometheus. Phaethon from the sun, where night in the far west meets the setting sun. There was the titan Eopatus, great sun, hung from the beetling crag of Caucasus, hung from the beetling crag of Caucasus, in bonds of adamant. Titan Eopatus, great sun, hung from the beetling crag of Caucasus, in bonds of adamant, and the eagle tear his liver unconsumed, and the eagle tear his liver in crag of Caucasus, in bonds of adamant, and the eagle tear. For anybody who played God of War, obviously the other God of War games are about Greek mythology, but the uh, new one, which is about Norse mythology, the guy uh, that's tied to the tree and you cut off his head, I guess he's the, uh, I forget his name, but I guess he's the uh, Norse equivalent of Prometheus, because it's the, sort of the same story, like he's like the smartest guy and, you know, Zeus or Odin tied him to a tree and forced him to be tortured forever. Um, and that's what happened to Prometheus as well. It was the titan Eopatus, great son, hung from the beetling crag of Caucasus in bonds of adamant, and the eagle tear his liver. I forget that guy's name now. I gotta play God of War 2018 uh, again. Caucasus in bonds of adamant, and the eagle tear. No, that's too long. In bonds of adamant, and the eagle. Still too long. Caucasus in bonds of adamant, and the eagle tear his there liver unconsumed. He seemed to groan. All these Hephaestus cunning hands. So of course Hephaestus is the one to do it. Are unconsumed. He seemed to groan. All these Hephaestus cunning hands had wrought for Hercules. And these to Pius' son. And these to Pius' son. Most near of friends and dear. Cunning hands had wrought for Hercules. And the. So when Hercules... I guess he was friends with... Uh... Philoctetes. I don't know if they were Argonauts together or I forget what they did, but they were friends. And when Hercules died, uh, which is a whole story in itself where he basically got tricked into putting on a poison shirt that uh, agonized him so much that he actually uh, ripped trees out of the ground, lit them on fire, and set himself on fire uh, in order to stop being damaged by the poison shirt. When he did that, he basically like bequeathed the bow, his bow, to uh, Philoctetes, uh, which kind of became Philoctetes' like signature thing. So this is a pretty valuable gift, I guess. Yeah, Her Hercules or Heracles didn't really have very good luck throughout his lifetime. Not only did he murder uh, Megara and uh, all his children, but he also had to do those labors, and he wasn't even thanked for it. And then he <laughs> had uh, got killed by a poison shirt. Bounds of not great stars, baths, and utmost bounds of earth, and fountains of deep flowing ocean, where night in the far west meets the setting sun. There was the titan Eopatus, great sun, hung from the beetling crag <clears throat> of Caucasus in bonds of adamant, and the eagle tear his liver unconsumed. He seemed to groan. All these Hephaestus cunning hands had wrought for Hercules, and these to Pius' son, most near of friends and dear. For Hercules, and these to Pius' son, most near of friends and dear, he gave to bear. I'll keep that original. Pius' son, most near of friends and dear, he gave to bear. And these to Pius' son, most near of friends and dear, he gave to bear. I wonder why I kept redoing that. He gave line. to bear. He gave to bear. Let's just put a little space. Near of friends and dear, he gave to bear. So glorying in those arms, so glorying in those arms, he smote the foe. <clears throat> I want to look up what the name of the guy was from God of War now. It's bothering me. Uh... 
God of War 2018 head. Mimir. Yeah. Mimir, also known as the smartest man alive, nicknamed by Kratos as Head. In Norse mythology, he's renowned for his knowledge and wisdom. He's beheaded by the Vanir gods. Odin revives the head of Mimir through some magic. Right. And then uh, Prometheus. 2012 film, also very good. He's best known for defying the gods by stealing fire. And then he... Uh, As a punishment, he's sentenced to eternal torment by being bound to a rock, and an e eagle is sent to eat his liver, and then it's regenerated every day, and it comes back. So it's kind of the same situation uh, as the way we find him in God of War. All the Greek gods, or the Norse gods, are kind of like similar to the Greek gods in their way. He seemed to grow. All these Hephaestus' cunning hands had wrought for Hercules. And these to Pia's son, most near of friends and dear, he gave to bear. So glorying in those arms he smote the foe. But Paris at the last to meet him sprang fearless. Alright, so here's a uh, big scene here. Here, he gave to bear. So glorying in those arms he smote the foe. But Paris, at the last, to meet him, sprang fearlessly, bearing in his hands his bow and bearing in his hand, bearing in his hands his bow and deadly arrows. But his bearing in his hands his bow and bow and. I like the first part. Let's see if we can keep it. At the last, to meet him, sprang fearlessly, bearing in his hands his bow and deadly arrows. Yeah. But his latest day now met himself. But his latest day now met himself. A flying. Sh it's a great line. It's very hard to read, uh, to narrate, and have it sound like authentic. Um, so it's trying to say, Paris came out of the blue, tried to shoot Philoctetes, but he's about to die. And the way they phrase that is, but his latest day now met himself. So basically it's saying, like, the circle of time has... It's it, the bill has come due essentially. Like uh, he he's not going any farther than this. It's a great line, but it's very hard to read authentically. Uh, it's easy to put on the page, but it's kind of like hard to say out loud and have it sound good. Sprang fearlessly, bearing in his hands his bow and deadly arrows, but his latest day now met himself. A flying shaft he sped forth from the string, which sang as left the dart, which flew not vainly himself a flying shaft he sped forth from the string which sang as leapt the dart which flew not vainly which sang as leapt the dart which sang as leapt the dart which flew I like that better from the string which sang as leapt the dart which flew not vainly yet the very mark sang as leapt the dart which flew not vainly yet the very mark it missed which flew not vainly yet the very mark it missed for Philoctetes swerved aside a hair breadth, and it smote above the breast. Yet the very mark it missed, yet the very mark it missed. For Philoctetes, the dart, which flew not vainly, fed forth from the string, which sang as leapt the dart, which flew not vainly, yet the very mark it missed. And we're going to want to take from that, add to that. The dart, the string, which sang as leapt the dart, which flew not vainly, yet the very mark as leapt the dart, which flew not vainly, yet the very mark it missed, for Philoctetes swerved aside a hair breadth, and it smote above the breast clear. So Philoctetes basically does like a Goku like thing like that, and, and the arrow misses him. Although I, I don't know that he's supposed to have intentionally dodged it. <laughs> I think he might have just like moved in a way that made it miss. Not I imagine it as like a Dragon Ball Z thing where he just like goes like that. <laughs> which flew not vainly. Yet the very mark it missed, for Philoctetes swerved aside a hair breadth, and it smote above the breast Cleodorus wore renown, and cleft a path clear through his shoulder, for he had not now the buckler broad which want to face, for he had not now the buckler broad which want to fence from death its bearer. 
broad which want to fence from death its bearer. For he had not now the buckler broad which want to fence. <laughs> this is an interesting uh, kill where he, he sends the arrow so powerfully that it goes through the guy's entire shoulder, uh, which you don't typically see depicted very much, usually the arrow sticking out of a person. As Cleodorus wore an owl and cleft a path clear through his shoulder. For he had not now the buckler broad which want to fence from death its bearer, but was falling back from the fight. Fence from death its bearer, but was falling back from the fight, being shieldless, for Polydamus' massy lance had cleft. Which want to fence from death its bearer, but was falling back from the fight. Now the buckler broad which want to fence from death its bearer but was falling back from the fight, being shieldless. For Polydamus Massy Lance had cleft the shoulder belt where he, For Polydamus Massy Lance had cleft the shoulder belt, but was falling back from the fight, being shieldless. For Polydamus Massy Lance had cleft the shoulder belt whereby his targe hung, and he gave back therefore, fighting still with stubborn spear. But now the arrow of death fell. His targe hung, and he gave back therefore, fighting still with stubborn spear. But now the arrow of death fell on him, as from ambush leaping forth for or now but now the arrow of death fell on him, as from ambush for spear. But now the arrow of death fell on him, for so fate fell on him, as from ambush leaping forth. But now the arrow of death fell on him, as from ambush leaping forth. For so fate willed I trow to bring dread doom on noble-hearted Lernus Scion. It's one of the rare moments where it's like first person. Quintus himself is saying, I guess fate wanted to kill him. You know, he, he personally is, the narrator is addressing himself. Death fell on him, as from ambush leaping forth. Or so fate willed, I trow, to bring ambush leaping forth. <clears throat> as from ambush leaping forth. Or so fate willed, I trow, to bring dread doom on noble-hearted Lernus Scion. Uh, where are we here? Okay. Or so fate willed, I trow, to bring dread doom on noble, to bring dread doom on noble-hearted Lernus Scion, born of Amphiali, in Rhodes the fertile land. Born of Amphiali, in Rhodes the fertile land, in Rhodes the fertile. Born of Amphiali, in in Rhodes the fertile land. Born of Amphiali, to bring dread doom on noble, to bring dread doom on noble-hearted Lernus Scion, to bring dread doom on noble-hearted Lernus Scion, to bring dread doom this on noble-hearted Lernus Scion. I trow to bring dread doom. Fate willed, I trow, to bring dread doom on noble heart. Willed, I trow, to bring dread doom on noble hearted Lernus Scion. Willed, I trow, to bring dread doom on noble hearted Lernus Scion. Born of Amphiali, born of Amphiali. Born of so for this, I wanted two different pieces here. For so fate will I on. Born of. We're gonna use this for timing. Born of Amphiali. Lernus Scion. Born of Amphiali. In Rhodes, the fertile land. Lernus Scion. Born of. Noble hearted Lernus Scion, born of Amphiali, in Rhodes. Now we raise it. Lernus Scion, born of Amphiali, in Rhodes, the fertile land. But soon, fertile land. But soon as Pius Battle.
erodes the fertile land. But soon in Rhodes the fertile land. But soon as Pius Battleeager son marked him by Paris deadly arrow slain. This is another Dragon Ball Z type thing. I don't know why I compare everything to Dragon Ball Z, but like basically they kill Yamcha here and then Goku gets really angry. It's like an excuse for Goku to get really angry. Um, so the, like this happens a lot in this story, but it'll be like some some friend of a character gets killed and then that, that hero whose friend it was sort of like goes Super Saiyan and just like destroys everybody. So fate willed, I trow, to bring dread doom on noble-hearted Lernus Scion, born of Amphiali, in Rhodes the fertile land. But soon as Pius Battleeager son marked him by Paris deadly arrow slain, swiftly, but soon as Pius Battleeager son marked him by Paris deadly arrow slain, in Rhodes the fertile land. But soon as Pius Battleeager son marked him by Paris deadly arrow slain, swiftly he strained his bow, shouting aloud. Now we're in it. They're having the vocal showdown. Uh, dog! I. I like Philoctetes' voice. I try to give him kind of like a more nasally voice because uh, he's not really been among people f for very long. He's like sort of was like malnourished and stuff. So I try to make him sound a little bit more. Born of Amphiali. You're not going to hear it that much here because he's like really angry, so it's sort of modified. But. Atlantis Scion, born of Amphiali, in Rhodes the fertile land. But soon as Pius Battleeager son marked him by Paris deadly arrow slain, swiftly he strained his bow, shouting aloud, Dog, I will give thee death. I... Yeah, you can still hear it. Swiftly he strained his bow, shouting aloud, Dog, his bow, shouting aloud, Dog, I will give thee death. Dog, I will give thee death. I will... I will give thee death, will speed thee down. I will give thee death, will speed thee down to the unseen land. Who darest to brave me? Who darest to brave me? And so shall they have. Who darest to brave me? Who darest to brave me? Hmm. I don't. I want Felix to be a little bit less boastful. So he's gonna say, "Who darest to brave me?" Rather than "Who darest to brave me?" You know, like that's something Eurypolis would say. I feel like. Speed thee down to the unseen land, who darest to brave me. And so shall they have rest, who travail now for thy vile sake. Destruction shall have end when thou art dead, the author of our bane. Destruction shall have end when thou art dead, the author of our bane. Then to his breast he... So he knows who Paris is uh, in the middle of the battlefield. Sometimes they'll be like, who are you? You know, they'll like introduce themselves almost. Um, but he recognizes Paris because he's saying like you're the cause of this whole war like when you're dead we'll all get to go home Jen shall have end when thou art dead the author of our bane then to his breast he drew the plated cord the great bow of our bane then to his breast he drew the plated cord let's raise all this big time a lot of raising. Wow. Action shall have end when thou art dead, the author of our bane. Then to his breast he drew the plated cord, the great bow arched, the merciless, the great bow arched, the great bow arched. That's better. He drew the plated cord, the great bow arched. The merciless shaft was aimed straight. Bow arched. The merciless shaft through the plated cord. The great bow arched. The merciless shaft was. Why can I not get this? Then to his breast he drew the plated cord. The great bow arched. The merciless shaft was aimed. He drew the plated cord. The great bow arched. The merciless shaft was aimed straight. And the terrible point a little peered above the bow. And the terrible point a little peered above the bow. No, first one's way better. The bow. 
in that constri- And the terrible point a little peered above the bow, in that constraining grip. Point a little peered above the bow. And the terrible point a little peered above the bow, in that constraining grip. Loud sang the string, as the death-hissing shaft leapt and missed not, yet was not Paris' heart still. As the death-hissing shaft leapt and missed not, yet was the... Yet was not Paris heart still. Hmm, what do we like better, this? As the death hissing shaft leapt and missed not. As the death hissing shaft leapt and missed not. Ah, first one's fine. This is one of those situations where it's like they kind of sound the same. So this is an interesting death scene. I'll explain it after it happens. Loud sang the string as the death hissing shaft leapt and missed not. Yet was not Paris' heart still, but his spirit yet was strong in him, for that first arrow was not winged with death. So as you can hear, uh, this is kind of like a one of those things where it's like they did a little Chekhov's gun in the previous chapter, uh, because Philoctetes was stuck on that island with the um, the like poisonous snake that caused him to have a wound that wouldn't cure itself for ten years. Uh, and his arrows were tipped with the poison from that snake. And um, he d uh, brings his bow and arrows to the war. And in this scene, he hits Paris, but it doesn't kill him. Uh, and as we will continue to see, it doesn't need to kill him with the arrow because it has the stuff on it from the snake. And that constraining grip. Loud sang the string as the death hissing shaft leapt and missed not. Yet was not Paris' heart still, but his spirit yet was strong in him. For that first arrow was not winged with death. It did but graze the fair flesh by his wrist. Then once again the Avenger drew the bow. Then once again the event. Then once again the... There's an interesting moment where Philoctetes is almost like Hawkeye, where he shoots two arrows fully, one and two, before Paris can even get off a shot. Winged with death. It did but graze the fair flesh by his wrist. Then once again the Avenger drew the bow. Arrow was not winged with death. It did but graze the fair flesh by his wrist. Then once again the Avenger drew the bow, and the barbed shaft of Pia's son had plunged ere he could swerve, twixt flank and groin. No more he abode the had plunged ere he could swerve, twixt flank and groin. No more he abode the fight, but swiftly hasted back as hastes a dog which on a lion rushed at first, then fleeth terror-stricken back. So he... And so Philoctetes hit him with another, right in the sort of like uh, upper, like it is belly button, basically. Um, and that's the picture that we illustrated, if you guys recall, um, where Philoctetes is shooting Paris, and it hits him right there. The fight, but swiftly hasted back, as hastes a dog which on a lion rushed at first, then fleeth terror-stricken back. So he his very heart with agony thrilled. Let's see if we have uh, the picture here. I have a couple temp pictures. Oh yeah. This is our picture of this scene happening. Uh, Philoctetes is shooting Paris, who gets hit right there. And uh, Strife is sort of directing him to kill Paris as sort of a circle of... It's a circular thing for me. It doesn't happen in the scene, but I thought it would be cool because Strife was the cause of Paris's whole thing. So now she's like telling him to take him out. And Aphrodite's running away because she's his patron goddess. This is our illustration for this chapter. So this is the moment where the illustration occurs as haste a dog which on a lion rushed at first then fleeth terror stricken back so he his very heart with agony through let's add some time for that back as haste a dog which on a lion rushed at first then fleeth terror stricken back so he his very heart with agony thrilled fled from the war still clash the grappling hosts man slaying man i bloodier wax the fray as rain the blows Corpse upon corpse was flung confusedly, like thunderdrops, or flakes of snow, or hailstones, by the wintry blast. 
by like thunder drops or flakes of snow or hailstones by the wintry black snow or hail hailstones by can I just get away with getting rid of that Thunder drops or flakes of snow or hailstones by the no it doesn't work don't don't that will so you don't have to cut where the end of the word is there's certain parts within a word you can see are like a little more conducive to cutting. So instead of cutting after stones, which sounds like a cut, we're going to cut where it says tones in stones, and that should work. Like thunder drops, or flakes of snow, or hailstones. By so the you can't even tell there was a cut there. Snow or hailstones by the wintry blast at Zeus's behest strewn over the... You don't want to cut where people expect you, there to be a cut, because then they'll be almost like subconsciously looking for it. But if it's in the center of a word, where there's like a natural kind of like roller coaster, like up and down, when it's at the down point, you can usually get a cut in there. It doesn't sound like a cut at all. Flung confusedly, like thunder drops, or flakes of snow, or hailstones, by the wintry blast at uh, move that or hailstones, by the wintry snow, or hailstones. By the wintry blast at Zeus's behest strewn over the long Yeah, that's good. Corpse upon corpse was flung confusedly, like thunder drops, or flakes of snow, or hailstones, by the wintry blast at Zeus's behest strewn over the long hills and forest boughs. So by a pitiless doom slain. So by a pitiless doom slain, friend strewn over the long hills and forest boughs. So by a pitiless strewn over the long hills and forest boughs. So by a pit strewn over the long hills and forest boughs. So by a pitiless doom slain, friends with foes in heaps on heaps were strewn. Friends with foes on heaps and friends with foes in heaps on heaps were strewn. Friends with foes in heaps on heaps were strewn. No, that's no good. Friends with foes in heaps on heaps were strewn. Sorely grown pa Yeah, this works. Pitiless doom slain. Friends with foes in heaps on heaps were strewn. It's really great visual uh, just imagery in the text where it's saying that corpses are being flown like hailstones or thunder drops, like raindrops, or flakes of snow. Like there's so corpses are falling so constantly on the battlefield that it's like snow falling. That's really powerful imagery. With foes in heaps on heaps were strewn. Sorely groaned Paris with a torturing wound. Leeches sought to allay. Sorely groaned Paris. I'm gonna re-record that. Sorely groaned Paris, with a torturing wound fainted his spirit. With the torturing leeches sought to a Sorely groaned Paris, with the Paris, with the torch groaned Paris, with the torturing wound fainted his spirit. Leeches sought to allay, leeches sought. So this is where Paris is being like, he thinks he gets, I mean, he's already pretty much mortally wounded by the shot to his gut but what really is taking him down is the poison that's inside of Philoctetes arrows and no, nothing can really save him and this is one of those moments where you kind of need to know the mythology when you're reading the book because they mention Enoni which is referred to as Paris's wife and we all know that Helen is Paris's wife but it's one of those things where you kind of need to know the backstory where Paris had a wife already and he ditched her for Helen. Um, and it's never really mentioned throughout any of the Homeric stories or th this story until this moment. Um, so he kind of like comes begging back to his old wife and we'll see what happens with that. So by a pitiless doom slain, friends with foes in heaps on heaps were strewn. Sorely groaned Paris. With the torturing wound fainted his spirit. Leeches sought to allay his friend. Leeches sought to his spirit. Leeches sought to allay his frenzy of pain. But now drew back and fainted his spirit. 
leeches sought to allay his frenzy of pain, but now drew back. Hmm, that's not right. I think we want to do that over. To allay his frenzy of pain, but now drew back to Troy the Trojans. Let's make this a range here. Keeps were strewn. Sorely groaned Paris. With the torturing wound fainted his spirit. Leeches sought to allay his frenzy of pain. But now drew back. Yeah, it's totally wrong. Because that's one self contained thing. I was doing it as if it was part of another thing. It should be. Sorely groaned Paris. With the torturing wound fainted his spirit. Leeches sought to allay his frenzy of pain. But now drew back to Troy the Trojans. Yeah, it's like an arc. This, this doesn't have anything like that. But now, but that's why I always, I expect that I'm doing re-records, and I'm when I'm doing the edit, I mark for re-records if I find them, and I also listen through the entire thing when it's all done, just to know where I need to re-record. Um, I always expect that's like a normal part of the process. Leeches sought to allay his frenzy of pain. But now drew back to Troy the Trojans, and the Danaeans to their ships, and the Danaeans to their ships swiftly returned. Yeah, I guess that's the nice thing about being the narrator and the editor, is that I can think like a editor when I'm narrating. But now drew back to Troy the Trojans, and the Danaeans to their ships Trojans, and the Danaeans to their ships swiftly returned. For dark night put an end to struggle. Drew back to Troy the Trojans, and the Dun did I like lose the S here or something? Trojans, and no. Troy the Trojans, and the Danaeans to their ships swiftly returned. For dark night put an end. Sometimes the uh, noise reduction will kill small little S sounds and it'll make it sound like it's getting cut off. To Troy the Trojans, and the Danaeans to their ship. Back to Troy the Trojans, and the Danaeans to their ships swiftly returned. For dark night put an end to strife, and stole from men's, and stole from men's limbs weariness, pouring upon their eyes. They returned. For dark night put an end to strife, and stole from men's, put an end to strife. And stole from men's limbs to strife, and stole night put an end to strife, and stole from men's limbs. Yeah, I... night put an end to strife, and stole from men's limbs weariness, pouring upon their eyes heart healing, and stole from men's limbs weariness, pouring upon. Yeah, there we go. Night put an end to strife, and stole from men's limbs weariness, pouring upon their eyes pain healing sleep. Pouring upon their eyes. That's it. Thank you. Night put an end to strife, and stole from men's limbs weariness. Pouring upon their eyes, pain healing sleep. Eyes pain healing sleep. But through the live long night, no sleep laid hold on Paris, for his help. For his help, no leech availed. Hold on, Paris. For his help, no leech availed, though never so willing, with his salves. His weird was only by Noni's hands. No leech availed. Leech availed, though never so willing, with his salve. Though never so willing, with his salves. His weird was only by Noni's hands to escape death's doom, if so she willed. His weird was only by Inoni's hands to escape death's doom. If so, she willed. If so, she willed. That's a fun little... that other one. Inoni's hands to escape death's doom. If so, she willed. Escape death's doom. Hands to escape... I wish I did that slower, but this works. It's a phrase that I uh, have come to realize reading more, you know, classic text uh somebody's weird like his weird is to do this 
or his doom is to do this. Uh, doom sounds like it's saying a bad thing, like it's it's your doom to die or whatever. But it just means, both of those things just mean it's your destiny or it's your like fate. With his salves, his weird was only by Inoni's hands to escape death's doom. If so, she will. Now he obeys. So this is the moment where he's going to Inoni, who's the only person that can save him. But it also happens to be his ex-wife, who he basically like left, you know, um, just to totally ditched for Helen. So may not uh, be a lot of happy feelings there. Only by Inoni's hands to escape death's doom. If so, she will. Now he obeyed the prophecy and went. Now he obeyed the prophecy and he went. Now he obeyed. And as you can see, just like pretty much everything in Greek stories, it's foretold that this would happen. Now he obeyed the prophecy and he went. Exceeding loath. Obeyed the prophecy and he went. Exceeding loath. But grim necessity forced him thence to face the wife forsaken. Evil boding foul sh I tried to slow that part down a little bit for anybody who was like listening to the audiobook for the first time, because this story totally just steamrolls over giving any kind of backstory to Inoni. I guess it's expected, you know, the ancient uh, Greek and Romans who were telling this story when Quintus was uh, around. They probably expected everybody knew who Inoni was, so there's never any explanation for it. Um, and I intentionally don't do any of the like footnotes in my edition of the book that says like Inoni was the wife of Paris, you know. So, like so, I think it's more fun to like find that stuff out for yourself for anybody who's looking for it. But in the narration, I at least try to like put emphasis on certain things in such a way that it becomes a little easier to understand. Now he obeyed the prophecy, and he went, exceeding loath. But grim necessity, the prophecy, and he went, exceeding loath. But grim necessity forced him thence to face the wife forsaken. Evil boding fowl shrieked over his head, or darted past to left, still as he went. Now, as he looked at them, his heart. Any time a, a bird darts to somebody's left, that's like a classic Greek uh, symbol that something bad's about to happen. If the bird darts to the right, it's good luck. If it darts to the left, very bad luck. Darted past to left, still as he went, the wife forsaken. Evil boding fowl shrieked over his head, or darted past to left, still as he went. Now as he looked at them, his heart sank. Now hope whispered, Thou dastard. Now as he looked at them, his heart sank. Now as still as he went. Now as he darted past to left, still as he went. Now as he looked at them, still as he went. Now as he looked at them, his heart sank. Now hope whispered, Haply vain their fo- Haply vain their bodings are. Oh yeah, so he's like in the throes of being poisoned, so I tried to give him like a dying voice. I like that. Yeah, he has like a speech with this voice too, so I, I really tried to give it some volume. So even Paris knows when he sees the bird darting to the left, he's like, this isn't going to work, I'm going to die. To them, his heart sank. Now hope whispered. Haply vain their bodings are. Now hope whispered. Haply vain their bodings are. Haply vain their bodings are. But on their wings were born in their bodings are. Haply vain their bodings are. Haply vain their bodings are. No, that one doesn't really work if it's only one sentence. Now hope whispered. Haply vain their bodings are. But on their wings were born. On their bodings are. But on their wings were born visions of bodings are. But on their wings were born visions of doom that blended with his pain. Into Inoni's presence thus he came. Amazed, her thronging handmaids looked on him. 
Presence thus he came. Presence thus he came. Amazed, her thronging handmaids looked on him as the nymph's feet. Amazed, her thronging handmaids looked on him as his presence thus he came. Amazed, her thronging handmaids looked on him as at the nymph's feet that pale suppliant fell, faint with the anguish of his wound. Oh yeah, I guess Enonia is also a nymph. Everybody's a nymph. Looked on him as at the nymph's feet that pale suppliant fell, faint with the anguish of his wound whose pangs stabbed him through brain and heart, yea, quivered through his very bones, for that fierce venom crawled through all his inwards with corrupting fangs. Let's just raise all this. There's a great speech here where Inoni gets to tell him off. I don't know if we'll get to it. Faint with the anguish of his wound, whose pangs stabbed him through brain and heart, yea, quivered through his very bones, for that fierce venom crawled through all his inwards with corrupting fangs. And his life fainted in him agony, and his life fainted in him agony thrilled, as one words with corrupting fangs, and his life fainted inwards with corrupting fangs, and his life fainted in him agony thrilled, as one with sickness and tormenting thirst consumed, as one with as one with sickness and tormenting thirst consumed, agony thrilled, as one with sickness and tormenting thirst consumed lies parched with heart quick shuddering lies parched with heart quick shuddering with li consumed lies parched with heart quick shuddering with liver seething as in with liver ending thirst consumed lies parched with heart quick shuddering with liver seething as in flame the with heart quick shuddering with liver seething as in flame the soul, scarce conscious, fluttering at his burning lips, longing for life, for water, longing sore, so longing for life, for water, longing for life, for water, longing sore. So was his breast one longing for life, for water, longing sore, eh. for water, longing sore, for water. That's better. Longing for life, for water. Yeah, that's no good. For water. Longing for life, longing for. What am I missing here? Life. Longing for life. Yeah, that works. So with for life, for water. Longing for life, for water. Longing for life, for water. Longing sore. Hang at his burning lips. Longing for life. For water, longing sore. So was his breast one fire of torturing pain. Then in exceeding feebleness he spake. Then in exceeding feebleness he spake. Then in exceeding feebleness he spake. That's the best one. Drink one fire of torturing pain. Then, in exceeding feebleness, he spake. Spake. Oh, rev. <laughs> this is Paris's, uh. Very, uh. Pained speech. We still have to raise it, though. In a movie, you would let this sound be very quiet. Uh, Audible will not accept it if we let it be that quiet, though. Feebleness. He spake. O oh, reverenced wife, O oh, reverenced wife, O oh, reverenced, <laughs> O oh, reverenced wife, turn not. Yeah, that's the best one. Feebleness, he spake. O oh, reverenced wife, turn not from me in hate. He spake. O oh, reverenced wife, turn not from me in hate, for that I left. For that I left, turn not from me in hate. For that I, for that I. Hate, for that I left thee widowed long ago. Not of my widowed long ago. Not of I, not. This is where he's like starts making excuses. Not from me in hate, for that I left thee widowed long ago. 
Not of my will I did it. The strong fates dragged me to Helen. Oh, that I had died ere I embraced her. In thine arms had died. Oh, by the gods I pray. Arms had died. Oh, in thine arms had died. Oh, by the gods I pray, the lords of heaven, by all the memories of our wedded love, be merciful. Be merciful. Banish my... That's better, yeah, the pained one. By all the memories of our wedded love, be merciful. Banish my bitter pain. Lay on my deadly wound those healing... Mm, too many of those in a row. We're going to skip that one, actually. Memories of our wedded love, be merciful. Banish my bitter pain. Lay on my deadly wound those healing salves, which only can by fate's decree... Which only can by fate's decree remove this torment. So he knows that you know, and he's the only one. I don't know how he knows. Maybe she's just a really good healer or something. Or maybe he heard the prophecy. But somehow he knows that he knows he's the only one who can help him. Love, be merciful. Banish my bitter pain. Lay on my deadly wound those healing salves, which only can by fate's decree remove this torment. If thou wilt, if thou wilt, which only can by fate's decree remove this torment, if thou wilt, that which only can by fate's decree remove this torment, can by fate's decree remove this torment, if thou wilt. That makes more sense, the second one. Thank you to uh, Misoe for the follow. We are working on our audio book at the moment. Welcome in. Salve. Why didn't that work? There we go. Those healing salves, which only can, by fate's decree, remove this torment, if thou wilt. Thine heart must speak my sentence. Thine heart must speak thy. S Thine heart must speak my sentence, to be saved. If thou wilt, thine heart, thou wilt, thine heart, thou wilt, thine heart must speak my sentence, to be saved from death or no. Pity me, oh, make haste to pity me. This venom's might is swiftly bringing death. Make haste to pity me. This venom's might is swiftly bringing death. Heal me, while yet lingers in my li while life yet lingers in my limbs. Remember not those pa <laughs> Heal me, while life yet lingers in my limbs. Remember not lingers in my limbs. Remember not those pangs of jealousy, nor leave me by a cruel doom to die low fallen at thy feet. No. Uh, audition starting to slow down because it won't apply our effects fast enough. Fingers in my limbs. Remember not those pangs of jealousy, nor leave me by a cruel doom to die low fallen at thy feet. Nor leave me by a cruel doom to die low fallen at thy feet. This should have. First one's better because he sounds really pitiful. Cruel doom to die, low fallen at thy feet. This should offend the prayers, the daughters of the thundering Zeus. The daughters of the. This should offend the prayers, the. Th this should offend the prayers, the daughters of the thunderer Zeus. Fallen at thy. Cruel doom to die, low fallen at thy feet. This should offend the prayers. Now he's almost threatening her. He's saying, like, if you don't save me, you're going to offend Zeus. Low fallen at thy feet. This should have... Not a good move. I low fallen at thy feet. This should offend the prayers, the daughters of the thunderer Zeus, whose anger followeth unrelenting... Whose anger followeth and the Arinyi. The daughters of the thunderer Zeus, whose anger followeth unrelenting pride with vengeance, and the Arinyis executes their wrath. My queen, pride with vengeance, and the Arinyis. 
Anger followeth unrelenting pride with vengeance, and the Arinyes executes their wrath. My queen, I sinned, in folly sinned, yet from death save me. Oh, make haste to save. Yet from death save me. Yet from death save me. Oh, make haste to save. Oh, make haste to save. I think I like the first one better. Oh, make haste to save. Save me. Yep. So prayed he. To save. Good. Okay, so we made a lot of progress. I don't know where we started. Uh, I think we started around here. 7 to 17. That's great. My estimation typically is that uh, in one hour of editing, you will get 10 minutes done. Of 10 minutes of finished content done. So that's pretty much on track for that. Good stuff, ladies and gents. Uh, that's going to do it for this one. If you want to see more info about the project we're working on here, it's called Post Homerica The Fall of Troy. I'm publishing my own illustrated text edition of an ancient Greek story about the uh, fall of Troy, as you might have guessed. Uh, I'm also making an audiobook of it, which will be available on Audible soon. The text edition will be available on Amazon. Keep your eyes open for that. I'll be talking about it on stream and in the Discord. But until then, guys, bye bye, and thanks for watching.